We've all heard of the straw man fallacy. It's when, instead of responding to an argument that your opponent makes, you construct a caricature of their point of view that's easier to tear down. Do you believe that cultural issues such as single parenthood may contribute to disparities in outcomes between skin color groups? You're a racist, is the straw man. Do you believe that America needs a welfare state to protect its poor? You're a communist, is the straw man. Do you believe that police can help keep our communities safe? You're a fascist, is the straw man. It's always easier to misunderstand an argument than to get it right. And if we refuse to extend a bit of compassion to those we oppose, our chances of understanding, persuading, or even opposing them effectively are basically zero. The fact is that at bottom, we aren't all that different from one another. We often have conflicting ideas about how to move forward in the world, but most of us will agree that we want to move forward. If you doubt this, just ask around. You'll be hard pressed to find someone who wouldn't want a safer, fairer, more just world for everyone, if they could get it. Acknowledging this shared fundamental goal is the key to breaking through our deadlocked discourse. If we want a more united nation in which we can discuss ideas and figure out the best path forward together, then we need to engage both with the most charitable version of our opponent's argument and also with the most charitable version of our opponents by explicitly acknowledging their good intentions and our shared desires as human beings. I call this approach star manning. Different people have different upbringings, educations, beliefs, values, and temperaments all of which inform their opinions and behaviors. We all have reasons to think and feel and believe the things we do, and we almost always have things we can learn from each other. When you treat others with compassion and respect, you never know who might respond in kind. So many of the wonderful things we have accomplished as a species have been the result of successful communication. If we're to continue to make progress, we need to actively foster a culture of good faith and honesty based on the knowledge that we all have the same fundamental desires. It begins with each of us making the choice to see the other as human, flawed, perhaps ignorant, maybe even dangerous, but also human, no matter what they think. If you're still unconvinced, if you're reflexively rejecting this notion outright, you have to ask yourself, why? Why wouldn't you want to acknowledge your interlocutor's humanity, your mutual quest for safety, security, satisfaction, and success? How would compassion for your opponent affect your pursuits? I worry about the answers to those questions, and so should you. Hatred, enmity, and dehumanization are corrosive, not just to our social fabric, not just to those to whom we direct it, but also to ourselves. Our discourse is rife with belligerence and bile, and our platforms are designed to stoke polarization. Ideological capture is difficult to overcome, but it is possible if we consciously dial the temperature down. We should absolutely argue. We should absolutely fight for what we believe in. We should absolutely stand up for ourselves and for those we believe are downtrodden and disenfranchised but we should also respect the humanity present in all of us, even those who hold and act upon terrible and destructive ideas. Give others the benefit of the doubt. Favor patience and compassion over condemnation. When you find yourself getting agitated, stop. Acknowledge the emotion, voice it, and make a conscious effort to not let it overwhelm you. Difficult conversations are fraught with challenges but they also offer unique opportunities. Even if you can't get through to the person you're directly talking to, bystanders and fence sitters might be moved by your arguments, especially when they can see you as reasonable, compassionate, and fair-minded. And be open to admitting when you're the one who's wrong. Emulate the behavior you'd like to see. View being wrong as an opportunity, a chance to be better, smarter, and more on track than you were just a moment ago. Whether we ultimately agree or not, 
whether we try to communicate or not, whether we choose to be compassionate or not. We have to accept that we are all on the same boat. We will sink or sail together, and we ignore this fact at our own peril. Let's not. I'm Angel Eduardo. Have better conversations with me at fairforall.org.